we are a generation of people that really taught ourselves how to find what looks best on us, find our personal style, figure out our hair types, like all the things. And that really does something for you as an individual. And so now I'm like, child, I'm a whole mom and I have, you know, three daughters, two that are really little. One is my stepdaughter, but you know, it's like I'm teaching them really Sarai and my youngest who's eight weeks old Emery you know starting to teach them about hair and and how to dress and how to take care of their skin and all those sorts of things and it's just so crazy because I really learned from y'all and us and this community on YouTube that just blossomed into a career for me my life like this this platform is what really set the tone for me sisters, whoever's braids. And I think the reason for that is because we're so used to doing it. Because most of the time, like, somebody in our family, you know, if you have a sister and you're an adult now, that means you're all together. So you probably took her hair down or help her take somebody else's hair down or whatever. So I, like, never mind doing it. What's that, man? What? Come here, big boy. Come here. Daddy, take your hair now. You okay? I have to, man. Sit back. I know you don't want to. Sit back. I was just thinking about how, like, <clears throat> how that looks right now. So even taking our hair. You can be taking our hair with, with you know, thoughts on the father, thoughts on the goodness. Maybe specifically what came up was thoughts of thinking more and more about the living water and Mama. the abundant life that's tied to it. And how when you think about what we've been going through Mama. in terms of, you know, things and possessions and money and stuff like that, I mean we're nowhere near what we used to be. Yeah. And it's wild how it also took us time to like be okay with that. Yeah. But not just to be okay with that for the sake of like being okay with it, but but being okay with it being being the byproduct of us truly seeking after God. So it's like I think you talked about this. Like giving He'll give you the desires of your heart, but once you desire, the way that happens, the process of that, the spiritual process of that, is you 
loving him. So meeting your desires. Not true. Yes. So it wasn't that we was like, oh, you know, we get used to not having having as much money and we're going through this process, you know, loathing every moment and like wishing that, you know, things, were things different. could be different. It's yeah. like no. It was like God, we love you and our eyes are are, are literally locked in. Like we are we are locked in to what you desire of us. And then we look up and it's like, you know, I ain't bought no shoes. I can't remember the last time, the last pair of shoes I actually spent money on. As far as, like, I just got some Boston's, like, a few days ago. Prior to, like, that, it's been so long, which is mind-blowing because, you know, you get a couple pairs of shoes a week. <laughs> but I don't miss it. So it doesn't look like, oh, look at my closet. I ain't got as many shoes as I used to have. It's like, it doesn't feel like that at all. It feels like, whoa, like, look at my marriage. Look at my children. Look at forgiveness and how that is such a, a foundational part of everything that we do. Look at the way that we live and how we seek to please the Father. The way that we seek to walk outside and, and be kind to people and, 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 you know, sharing their joy and sharing their sorrow and pray with them and, you know, be present and ask for folks, all those things that like, I wasn't thinking about before. I wasn't worried about that. Um, I was telling one of my homies yesterday, one of the biggest impacts that I see in who I am today and who I used to be very plainly is who I used to be was always centered around me in some capacity. So like even when I did kind of things, it's a kindness. Everybody got asked for help, okay? You look, you better help me. Look. Oh look. Oh, look at that. That don't look to me sometimes I do it. You know. And so it's like even when I did kind of things or whatever while I, you know, saw myself as a kind person, at some point, it was going to come back to me. And there's a thin line between doing it because you seek to be kind and because you want to be like the Father and doing it with the mindset of like, at some point, this has to come back to me. Who's getting the glory? Exactly. Are you, are you leaving that glory for God to like, claim or are you trying to take a little piece of it and I think like a lot of people don't want to admit that they do want a little piece of it the world teaches us that you should get a little bit of the glory if you do something good and we were cre- like, I don't know why I read this but like part of how we were created is to get around us feeling our self worth Yeah. so it's, it it in its organic, pure form, there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. But that's why it's a thin line because yeah. that's why it's a narrow path. Because we can get too much of that. Yeah. To where now it's selfish. Now it's and it's the very of subtle. It like subtly grows. Subtle and you don't growth. you don't realize it until you're too far gone sometimes. Unless you have people around you that can like be honest with you, hold you accountable, are going in the same direction as you towards the father. And they can say, hey, like, you know, it feels a little, a little bit like there's a lot of Mark in this room and not enough, you know, God in this room. And it takes, you know, spiritual maturity to be able to like have those sorts of conversations and a level of, of humility to accept it when it's you, because it's all of us at some point. And if somebody or if you're somebody who can never like, Except somebody saying something to you, then you've got a long way to go to actually have the reward of your acts on earth actually equal something in heaven. Yes. And I mean, <laughs> it's a narrow path. Here you go, baby. Yes. And, Here. and it's not always just, you know, bad. It's, Sometimes you start with really good intentions. Yeah. And without having 
in the living water present without being able to seek approval wherever it can be found, it's very easy to just get lost in. It's very easy to just get lost in that. Yeah. So for me, I got lost in that to where when everybody's doing it, everybody around me is doing it because in order to, you know, stay on that path, there are people that you're around that also are doing it. So you don't have to necessarily see a problem with it because everything around you is doing the same thing. If every, if everything around you is, is operating in one way, you don't see a problem with it because now that way, whether it's, whether it's good or bad has become normal. Right. And then now fast forward with healing, with growth, with, ex- with not just experiencing the living water, but living with it. What we have and, and, and all those things, like spiritually, especially, like it went from this has to some way come back around and serve me, kind of keep boomerang effect. I'm going to throw this. So how long it take to come around? Mm-hmm. I know that since I've thrown it, it has to come back yeah. from that to now I want you to experience this. Yeah. And it's not about this like idea of reciprocity yeah. because that's what really the world is about and what the enemy is about is like yeah. transactions yeah. and it's not unconditional. Right. Unconditional really means there's no condition for this. Right. It's just I yours. treat you this way regardless of how you treat me back. Which is why Christ said love God with all your heart and then love your neighbor with all your heart. Upon these two commandments, everything else stands. Why? Because everything that he does is unconditional. So I'm not training myself and choosing to love him unconditionally, how can I do that for somebody else? How is it possible? So now in, in everything that we do, it, it's all, you know, it's all about, it's all about others with the assurance that like, as long as I'm, I'm in that, which is the will of my father, charity, selfless love, as long as I'm in that, we're going to take, like, I don't have to worry about, like, me. And by me being hyper-focused on me, I have blind spots that no matter what I do, I can't see. I can't. He did not put eyes in the back of my head for a reason. So no matter what I do, I can't see that. So if I'm just focused on me at bed, I only get the 50% that's in front of me. The whole 50% is blind to me. So I need you. Yeah. So out of that place, everything in my life has changed because now it's truly about others. And I want others to experience this love. And I want others to experience this kindness. And I want others to experience unconditional love. And I want others to experience forgiveness because I've experienced what God desires for to feel like in this world. It's something like we've never experienced. It's like, yeah, you think, you, you think you're going through with your, um, you know, <laughs> water from a pipe with all the leads and metals and stuff in it. But then you get rainwater. That takes your car to another level. Like, the nutrients and stuff is in that stuff is wild. It's like, and until I experienced it this year, I had no clue. Like last year, I don't think it rained that much in the spring. And I was, you know, out there watering. But this spring, I think I watered manually. Like twice the whole spring with with rainwater that I collected, but all the other rain came from it was raining like three or four times a week for like two months straight. And the ground flourished. We got salmon, we got tomatoes, we got we got watermelons right now. Four of them things going strawberries and bell peppers and all types of stuff like zinnias and cosmos and lilies. Yep. 
He's doing so good. Second to last. No, two more breaks. Right. You don't even say please. Give them crackers. <laughs> say please. Say please. Say please. <laughs> you almost done, big boy. You almost done. Boom, 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 boom. You almost done, man. Come on. Here, I'll hold your hand with this hand. Here, hold my hand with this hand. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. <laughs> Focus on this. Oh, got it. My bad, girl. Because I do it massive. Focus on doing this. Focus and learn. It's super sparkly pink and you can even see it. Look how it goes. It's still sparkly. Out oh, and then it's sparkly. Color to color to color. It's pretty. Right? The pink yeah. is pretty. It is pretty. Huh? Um, chip and potato. Uh huh. So I'm about to do my hair and I just got some products from, ow, I just got some products from Ori Bay. If you've never heard of Ori Bay, they are like a luxury hair care brand. My favorite thing about this brand is the scent, okay? Their fragrance is just so, it just like transports you into luxury, okay? Whatever your version of luxury is, that's where these products take you. But at the same time, the products work really, really well, but they are definitely not products you want to be heavy handed with. So a lot of time when you use like cheaper stuff, you can pile it on and you need to pile it on to make your hair feel moisturized or shiny or whatever. But with products like these, you really just need to use a small amount and it will get your hair there. So I talked about this one spray from Ori Bay this one right here on Instagram, or I posted about it on Instagram a few weeks ago now, and it's their Apre Beach Wave and Shine Spray. I actually use this on my curly hair because it gives it just a little bit of oomph when my hair is feeling a little flat. And I find that sprays really work well for my hair at the length that it at, that it is right now. And so I like using this, plus it's got that same scent that I love, that fragrance that I love from Oye Bay in it. So it kind of adds a little bit of something, okay, on top of giving my hair some lift. And it does give a little bit of hold too. So I really like this. If you're somebody who uses like hairsprays, especially like in your curly hair, then you'll really like this also. These products are just a little bit pricey, y'all, okay? Like, let me tell you now, these are pricey. So it's one of those things when I say luxury, okay? It's a luxury, all right? So these are not products you just wanna nilly-willy nilly -willy go and buy because they do have a higher price tag, but they come with that other side of things, which is like hair care that's really in that luxury prestige, like, arena versus your you know affordable everyday shampoo conditioners hair care products since they sent these to me i've been wanting to try them and i've been trying to figure out what i want to do like do i want to do a roller set do i want to do a blowout do i want to try them on my curly hair i've kind of been up and down because this is the last week i'm gonna have my hair out before i get braids for our family vacation that's coming up so i wanted to play with something and do something before my hair is in a style for the next two to three weeks after that before I go on, this is the Brilliance and Shine collection. 
They also have a really amazing curly, I think it's called curl or curl and coil, something like that collection where it's all like for texture hair and curly hair styling. That line is really amazing. I've been using that line for years. I've been using Oribe products for years in general, but they came out with the curl products like, I don't know, probably what, four or five years ago now, but I don't see a lot of people talking about them. I think because of that price tag, for us, I feel like when you have natural hair, curly hair, you go through so much product. Like It's like, I need to be able to use as much of this and not feel guilty about it. You know what I mean? So yeah, so that's why for me, like when it comes to curly hair products, I usually don't spend that much money because I know I go through stuff really fast. But when I'm using, if I'm using products for when I style my hair using heat, so if I'm doing a blowout, if I'm doing, you know, a silk press or anything like that, or prepping for a roller set, I want to use really, really high quality products because I know I'm about to use heat, you know? So that for me makes sense to like spend a bit more on products if I'm doing something like that. So what I have here from this collection that I'm going to use after I use the shampoo and conditioner, I'm then going to go in with the run through detangling primer. This is like a leave in like prep product before I use this product, which is the Super Shine Moisturizing Cream. Now listen, usually when I do a roller set, cause that's what I think I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a roller set. I kind of hadn't made my mind up, but I think that's what I'm gonna do. Usually when I do a roller set, I try to keep it real like basic, like just using a foam or something to actually set. So usually I use this Influence Honey Almond Styling Foam. This is usually my go-to, but I'm almost out of it. So I bought a new foam to try. Where did I put it? So I actually picked up this Design Essentials Compositions Foaming Wrap Lotion at the Beauty Supply the other day because I've been wanting to try something that would be comparable to this one. Oh, it's about to fall apart. To this one, this one is $25 and I have to always order it off Amazon. This one I think was 15 or 20, I don't know, I can't remember. But obviously the size comparison of how much product you get is definitely more in this one. And I really wanna say this one was cheaper, but I love the results that I get with this. This has been my like holy grail since I chopped all my hair off and was wearing a pixie cut to working my hair natural again, all of that, I was using this. I've been using this. My roller sets were amazing. All of that. I love this. But again, I want to try something different just to like, you know, switch it up. So we're going to try this one today in combination with these. Now, I know this is not going to give me a true idea of what this is like by itself, but it's okay. I will use it again by itself to see tr a true comparison. But today I wanna just try all new things. So we're gonna use these two to prep and we're gonna use this to set the roller set and we'll see what happens after that. So just hopped out the shower. Of course, I've gotta do my skincare before we do anything else. I linked all of these products down below if you're interested. And as far as how my hair is feeling, I really liked the shampoo from this line a lot. It was such a soft lather and left my hair feeling so good before I even went in with the conditioner. So first we're going to use this uh, detangling primer. And then I'm going to use the moisturizing cream as a leave-in conditioner. I'm not going to use too much of this, just a little bit. Because like I said, you don't have to be heavy handed with products like these. So once I've worked that throughout my hair, I'm just going to start sectioning and applying water. So whenever you do a roller set, you want your sections to have primarily water and just a little bit of whatever foam that you're using. I've also seen people only use a leave-in conditioner in water to set their roller sets. I haven't tried that, but I probably will in the future especially as I'm trying to test out different things that work best for my hair. And so for me, I use the Design Essentials Foam, like I showed you before or chatted with you about before, to set my hair. And I'm just going to continue rolling my hair and showing you guys kind of that process a little bit. But it's pretty basic, pretty simple. I've got other videos on how I do my roller sets. And so if you have any other questions about the roller set, 
definitely drop them down below in the comment section. And I'm happy to answer those, especially if you want me to do like a full out like hair tutorial. You already know I'm good for that. Okay, so just let me know. See, y'all ask me, how do I have time to do my hair, get myself together in general with having all these kids? Child, they be in the background. Y'all just don't see them. <laughs> y'all don't see them unless I watch y'all to see them or hear them. <laughs> anyway, I just sat under the dryer, like a hooded dryer for about an hour. And now I'm just brushing out these curls. It's given, uh, I don't even know somebody grandma right now, but just be patient. Okay. Be patient. You got to work with it. So I'm going to wrap my hair. Usually I do like a silk, like a silk wrap, satin wrap. Is that what it's called? Plastic wrap under the dryer for another 10 minutes but this was the end of the day and I was tired I wanted to go to bed so instead I'm just wrapping my hair and putting a silk scarf on and going to sleep and letting it sit overnight so that's what I'm doing here and I'll be back in the morning It's my boo. I can make a quarter million off a high cool. And I can make another quarter off a times two. If it's money on the table, I'll be on it like Bobby or Epic. You peep the aesthetic. It's hard to forget it. I hear you talking, but you're hardly right. I'm the voice of your prototype. Mm. Summertime and then why? Yeah. Summertime and then why? Get the dry tops out. Okay, y'all, we ready, we ready. Let's see what this hair looking like. And this was the point when I realized that I was really, really on to something. Like this was the moment when I realized we did it, okay? We achieved the goal, okay? This hair came out so bomb. I was shocked. I'm so impressed because like I said before, usually I don't do anything outside of just foam and water but those two Ori Bay products really set the stage for this hairstyle like the way it came out is by far one of my best roller sets to date now look moving forward because this was just perfect I am going to use a flat iron next time to seal this because even though I use this little Amika brush to fix some of those little pieces that got waved on my rollers like that I missed in the rollers my hair reverted real quick after this like it was perfect here this is perfect it looks so perfect but I was doing some research and realized that no matter what I do okay sometimes your hair texture will revert if you don't seal it with some sort of direct heat so for some people they use a hot comb to do that or for me i've done one pass on the flat iron and that was good enough for me in the past so i'm going to do that next time because these results were just so good and i'm so sad i didn't use a flat iron because i was trying to avoid it but found out i'm just gonna have to do it because yeah the results were bomb and i could have gotten this roller set to last so much longer got some content to shoot i'm doing a campaign with Scoonsy, conair and dove on some products with like a back to school hairstyle on sarai but i wanted to share a little bit of the behind the scenes with you all in this vlog and i'll probably be posting the actual results and posts for this campaign 
in August. So definitely check that out on Instagram. Would love your support because child, these brand deals is how we eat. Okay, totally, totally appreciate the support on all of my posts, but definitely the ones that are partnerships because that's how I feed my family and how we survive and how we can continue making the content that we make, child. But anyway, I actually really love these products on Sarai's hair. If you haven't tried the Dove Hair Love products on your kid's hair, definitely check them out. Worth it for sure. I usually use whatever I have for my hair on Sarai's hair. So I tend to shy away from kid collections. But this one actually did really good on her. And I was honestly shocked at how well the detangling brush from Conair worked because I use real deal hair tools on Sarai because she has real hair. And so a lot of times with like little brushes like this that are meant for kids, I feel like they're not strong enough for her hair texture. But this little brush did a lot and I ended up actually using it on Mark's hair too. I was detangling his little fro the other day and I used this little brush on his hair and it worked and he has like real real tight 4c tight curls so yeah the brush doesn't look like much but it really does detangle really really well okay how does this sound we're gonna see how this sounds I'm using the little mic for my camera and I'm about to give Micah a bath they would just they were just playing outside in the water thing, the bounce house thing. And so he's got grass and stuff all over him. So hold on real quick. But anyway, I was just, <laughs> I was just scrolling on TikTok and I have been seeing these posts about OG YouTubers, specifically like in the beauty space. And it's so crazy because people actually say my name on these posts and I look through them and it's just, it dawned on me, it dawns on me every time I see these posts that we in the OG YouTuber community did not really comprehend what was happening when y'all were watching us. Like we did not know, none of us, even y'all knew what an era that would be. And even in the context of like what social media is today and like how YouTube is now and even me like being back here and actually creating content on a regular basis again it's just so interesting because you don't really think about this type of stuff when you're younger and you're just being creative and you're just like doing this new exciting thing that like people don't really understand but like there's people that love it on the internet like you don't really understand what it is and then you just continue doing it and you blink and like a decade goes by and it's no longer that season for us. You know what I mean? Like you don't really know when a season has come to an end until you're out of it. And I just think back to those times of just like how evergreen everything was and how you know, people really cared about what we had to say, what we were posting about, what products we were talking about, what we were using on our hair, on our face, and all those things. And it's it's so cute. Uh-uh, Micah, get back in that tub. Get back in the tub and stop. Y'all are fine. You're done? You're done in the bath. Yeah. Okay. You can stay, Sarai, if you want. Here, Micah, take your towel. Okay, so Micah, go get a pull-up. Go find a pull-up, okay? It's really crazy how the YouTube gurus of, you know, the 2010s and 2015, 16, you know, like th that era really taught so many of you. It's taught me, child. Like, I learned everything I know pretty much off YouTube or something that connected me to YouTube and gave me an opportunity or whatever, whether it be like being on sets and stuff, working with artists, not artists, but like, like stylists and um, hair makeup artists, all that, those sorts of people. Like I learned a lot from them, but it was because of the opportunities that I had from being on YouTube and sharing what I was using on my hair and all the things. And you know, it's crazy how we really taught ourselves, okay? 
we are a generation of people that really taught ourselves how to just find what looks best on us, find our personal style, figure out our hair types, like all the things. And that really does something for you as an individual. And so now I'm like, child, I'm a whole mom and I have, you know, three daughters, two that are really little. One is my stepdaughter, but you know, it's like I'm teaching them really Sarai and my youngest who's eight weeks old, Emery, you know, starting to teach them about hair and, and how to dress and how to take care of their skin and all those sorts of things. And it's just so crazy because I really learned from y'all and us and this community on YouTube that just blossomed into a career for me, my life. Like this, this platform is what really Yay, set the tone for me. Okay, baby, get back in the bath. And even though I had, you know, an internet era, even before YouTube, if you know, you know, um, in the MySpace days and things of that nature, back in 06, 07 timeframe, YouTube was really what established me as a content creator and what really established me as an influencer, really. So I don't know if it's been, I don't know when was the last time I said thank y'all, you know, thank you for being here. If you're new here, thank you for being here. If you're old here, thank you for being here. Yes, baby. Yeah, I'm gonna help you put it on, okay? Yep, we're gonna put it on. Oh, and we need to get more for today. We will get some more. Just thank y'all for staying with me and being here and spending your time. Cause especially now like the internet and social media is such a different world. I feel like people my age, if you're in your thirties like me or close to it, you're also kind of having these like off screen times and trying to be less on a screen, you know? And so trying to balance life um, off the internet and off Wi-Fi. But if you're on Wi-Fi or using data right now to watch this, I thank you because you could be consuming so many other things, but you're here with me. So I'm just excited for you to continue. Hey, chill out. I'm just excited for us to continue our weekly vlog together. I don't know if I'll ever do like other kinds of content, but this is what we on now. You know, like bringing y'all into our life, bringing you into the daily happenings of my family and finding joy in that and just being and sharing really um what life is like over here you know and so i thank y'all for supporting us and sticking with us and joining me on this journey on this chapter in this chapter of my life